Welcome to Give Energy Support and how to manually update the firmware on your Give Energy inverter. Now all you'll need to complete this is a machine running either Windows or Mac OS X and a way of transferring files from that machine to a USB A device. Please make sure you're watching the correct video for your specific inverter. On the side here, so I have a generation three inverter, you will see your serial number. You can also find it on the portal and on the top left hand corner of the app if you click the menu button, the three lines. So mine starts with FD, which means I have a generation three inverter. This is quite important as some of them look visually very similar and it's easy to confuse them. So this video is specifically for the Give Energy all-in-one system. So the serial number must start with either CH or CD. That's Charlie Hotel or Charlie Delta. Please note that this system should only be updated by competent personnel. If you're doing this manual update of your inverter or battery system, it's either under direction by Give Energy Support or it's failed the automatic process from the portal and you're gonna to have to do it manually to recover the system. Please make sure you only get the firmware files from Give Energy, either from the portal or email to you directly by Give Energy Support. There are firmware files floating around the internet, Facebook groups, people that own the same system as you. It may not be the correct one for you, it may not be the latest version, so please make sure you only get it directly from Give Energy. Now we're sure you're watching the correct one, all you will need is a USB drive such as this, USB A, and we can begin the process. If Give Energy Support have emailed you the file, then please put that attachment into the downloads folder on your machine. If you've watched the how to update your firmware via the portal video, and that's failed, and that's brought you to this one, then that's the only way the download button will appear on the portal if the firmware update has failed. As I said in that video, please click the retry update at least once. More often than not, it will work the second time. But if it doesn't, then click download. And then after that, this will appear and essentially just click download again. Then put the file into your downloads folder if it's not already there by default. And we can begin the process of transferring it onto the USB pen. So the first place we want to go is to click on this PC. That will open up this window and we want to go to the downloads folder that we've put the files in that we've just got from the portal or from the email. So you can see the zip file there. I'm going to right click on that, then click on extract all. If you're on Windows 10, it may look like this. So click on extract all and then tick the show extracted files when completing if it's not already and just click extract. A window pops up and what I'm going to do is to go inside that folder, which is where our firmware files are. So you can see those there. I'm gonna put those just to one side. And then I'm gonna go back to this downloads window and go to this PC. Now I'm going to plug in the USB drive. That may automatically pop up with another window. If it doesn't, then you'll be able to see it from the this PC window, which you can get to by just clicking on that as before. So what I'm going to do is right click on the USB drive, click format, or if again you're on Windows 10, click on format there. Change the file system to FAT32. Make sure quick format is ticked and then click start. Click OK. This should only take a few seconds. Click OK again and close that window. Now I'm going to go into the USB drive, which you can see there, which is empty, that's good. And now I'm gonna go back to the files that we got from before, the firmware files, and highlight them both. I'm now going to drag those to the USB folder and click copy. So you can either left click and drag or right click and drag as I did there. So these firmware files are now on the USB pen drive. So the last thing to do is to go back to this PC. I can either go down there and click on that or click on this PC at the top and then right click on the drive again and click on eject. Now the USB device is ready to use. We just need to get physical access to the correct place to put it in 
the relevant unit. The top panel on the right hand side of the all in one unit is what we need to remove. There's just four screws, unscrew them and the panel simply just comes away nice and easy. Notice the dip switches, the red part there. I want you to take a picture of that so we know what it looks like now and we can put it back to how it was before once we've finished this process. Turn dip switches one, two and three off to the left, if you will, and keep the fourth one to the right so that's on. Now, grab the USB pen drive with the firmware on it, plug it into the socket here next to the dip switches and that will start the whole firmware update process. The light at the middle there will start to alternate between green and red and then in a short space of time it will start to flash at a much faster rate. Allow at least five, six, seven minutes for this process, although it's usually a bit quicker than that and I have shortened this video for obvious reasons. The unit will then restart as you can see here. Once that's complete it will then start to flash green and red again very fast and I have to apologise at this stage because you're going to have to put up with this really annoying continuous beep. Please allow and listen to this annoying beep, I'm going to silence it now for the purposes of the video, to continue for at least one minute. At that stage what you can do is effectively just remove the USB pen drive from the underneath of the unit and that should very quickly silence the beep and at this stage the unit will restart and normal service should be resumed. The unit should just come back online and you're back to normal. Remember the picture you took of these dip switches? Get that and make sure these look exactly as they do in the picture because we have to revert them back to their previous state. The next step, being careful not to trap or touch any cables, is to put the panel back on the right hand side of the unit. There should be just four screws in total. And that's it, we are done. Please allow several minutes for the battery or inverter, whichever you've just updated, to reconnect to the Give Energy systems. So again, give it a few minutes to make sure it comes back online before you then think, hmm, something's not gone right. If you have any problems with this, then I would suggest the first step is to repeat the process. The step after that, if this has not worked for you, is to contact Give Energy Support Direct and ask for their advice. So we are done here. Thank you ever so much for watching. Any questions, please put in the comments. And if you're looking for any other videos regarding manual update process, they will be in the description below. So thanks for watching again, and I'll see you soon.